Good morning, my dear friends. Good evening to people who are joining from the US and good afternoon to people who are joining from the East. Welcome to day four of our breath by breath, a step-by-step -step approach to breath mindfulness session or course being presented by Pyramid Valley International. So I hope my voice is clear, audible. Wonderful, thank you. So my dear friends, we've been on this journey to discover more about our breath and also learn how just by being with our breath, we can transform ourselves from the inside. We've learned the right way of breathing and we've learned the focusing. We've learned the different components of mindfulness. We tried mindfulness of breathing. We tried, uh, yesterday we must have tried mindfulness of uh, eating. So we'll, we'll talk more about that after the meditation session. So first I want to quickly focus on the meditation session. So for those of you who joined us new, we've been through 13, 14, 15, so two full days uh, or two full sessions of focusing our attention at the nose and then three sessions of equal breathing besides whatever you've been doing outside of the class. So you might have discovered this is what happens during when you sit in meditation, right? Sometimes the mind wanders to thoughts and other distractions. For those of you not being used to sitting for a long time, you'll be feeling uneasy, restless. When will this end? Or maybe leg pain, back pain, shoulder pain. And for some of you, like uh, some of you mentioned yesterday, you may not be feeling the breath. You may not be feeling the breath. You may not be feeling the breath at the nose or the full breath. And obviously, interrupted attention to the breath. You'll focus attention on the breath and suddenly something else happens. Thoughts come. Some sounds come. Right? So, interrupted attention on the breath. And, and then judgment. So, we keep thinking, oh my God, I didn't feel my breath here. My breath is, in-breath is longer, out-breath is longer. I miss the counting on equal breathing. Right? It could be on the distractions or it could be around music, it could be around anything. And then feeling sensations due to the breath. Some of you might have been feeling some bodily sensations, right? Some energy currents flowing in different parts of your body. And then some others would be having some light. Like yesterday, someone said they had a, uh, what is it, sensation in the, uh, between the eyebrows. Some of you may be having some uh, visual experiences, seeing some scenes, seeing something from childhood or recalling something, some incident that happened uh, ages ago, or seeing some light, seeing some colors, emotional experiences like yawning, feeling sleepy, of course, is one common experience. Um, feeling tears, feeling tearful, feeling joyful, Right, and then sudden, sudden some pains in chest region or pain in shoulder region that didn't exist before. Of course, pains also go away. And then bodily experiences like movement in your body, right, and uh, some some smells. So, if any of you have been seeing any of these experiences, just type yes in the chat window. So, some smells, some sounds, some mantras. So you'll be you'll be feeling all these. Uh, experiencing all these during the meditation session, right? But what is important? What is important is primarily the continuous attention on your breath. In a couple of classes, we will talk about the different stages or states of meditation. How do you measure your progress in breath, breathfulness meditation? Both Patanjali and Buddha have spoken the same thing. The first stage is continuous attention to your breath. Your attention to your breath after breath after breath after breath. Initial stages, after attention on two breaths, you'll probably 
get distracted. Whereas as you continue the practice, after continuous attention for maybe 20 minutes, then you'll probably deviate, right? So that is the whole idea, just like any skill that we learn. So what is important is continuous attention on the breath. And then yesterday, that is where this techniques for mind wandering help. So we've been doing belly breathing, equal breathing, labeling. Today we'll talk about counting. So quickly, I want to recap on what we meant by labeling. Labeling is any time to sense a thought. Any time you are conscious that you have a thought. So just label it with a with a word. It doesn't need to be right. Don't worry about whether it's the right word or not. If you're having a thought regarding to your daughter or son or grandson or our spouse, then label it with their name and then leave it. If you're having a thought related to work, you can label it just work. If you're having a thought about some vacation, some holiday, something, then you just label it. If you're having a thought related to your breath, then label it breath. Label it and then return your attention back to your breath. So as you continue the cycle, the thoughts will continue to die down, right? There is science behind it. And a lot of us in all these breath by breath sessions and stillness retreats have uh, attested that that really helps along with equal breathing. So labeling is one that we spoke about yesterday. Today, I want to quickly talk about counting. Counting is another technique for people who are bothered by thoughts. How do you do counting? As you get into your normal breathing, at the end of every inhale, count one. Next inhale, count two. At the end of next inhale, count three. At the end of next inhale, count four. So count till 10 and then restart your counting from one. So during this 10 counts, your mind will wander, your mind might wander. So don't worry, you come back and restart your count from one. So for those of you who said you're bothering by bothered by thoughts, please try these techniques during our focusing step or the second step that we're talking about, going to talk about today. All right, so counting is basically at the end of every inhale, Count one. It doesn't matter if you miss an inhale, it's okay. If you are skipped an inhale and then you notice that the exhale, just need to count your breaths. You can choose a point as the end of inhale or end of exhale, which is beginning of inhale, right? That is all you need to do. So count till 10, restart. You can try this for five, 10 minutes and then see uh, five minutes. And for some time, you may not be able to some time and then uh, stop your counting and see if you are able to avoid thoughts for a while, right? And then uh, you can do that. So counting is counting from one to 10 at the end of uh, every in-breath and restart your counting from one. Okay, this helps. So yeah, so we saw that really breathing, counting, and connecting we'll talk about later. And this is all you need to do, my dear friends. Observe your normal breathing. Do not change anything about your breathing. Follow the cycle of your breath. Be aware of your thoughts and distractions. Feel the moments and sensations due to your breathing. That is all, right? And this is your breath cycle will come when we do the counting. All right, so before I go there, uh, any questions, people, if you have any questions or doubts, on the belly breathing, on the posture, and on equal breathing. I'd like to answer those now. Please type it on your chat window because we're going to start the second step of our observation today. Please type it on the chat window and uh, I will take those if there are any pressing things once I explain the second step. All right, so this is what we've been seeing, this chart, three parts to daily breathfulness meditation. We know this relaxation. We're going to practice 10 minutes of equal breathing or coherent breathing today. Equal breathing is basically, I will guide you through the equal breathing, long inhale and long exhale without holding it and counting through your inhale and exhale. Then we get into observation. We started with observing, focusing at your nose. All right, and then we end with an appreciation, two to three minutes of gratitude, where I ask you to remember three things 
that you want to be grateful for three things or people from the last 24 hours, you bring that in your mind and say thank you. All right. Because that, that feeling of gratitude is very important. So today we're going to introduce the next step called awareness of the breath cycle. It is called following your breath. So first step is focusing your attention on your breath. So we will do that for 15 minutes today. Yes, 15 or 20 minutes today. And then the last 10 minutes before appreciation, we'll use the following the breath. So what do I mean by following your breath? No lights up before that. Yeah, so there are a couple of questions on I can't sit for long. So if you are not able to sit for long, be in a comfortable posture, sir, madam. Right? So if you, if you feel that you want some pillows at the back, you can do that. Or if you feel your knees are aching, you can move your knees, move your legs, uh, and, or, or uh, clasp your fingers and then put it in, something like that. You can adjust your posture depending on your comfort level. If you're not able to sit still for a long time, you can adjust your pillows or you can slowly uh, do that. But the important thing is the posture. If you are in the right posture, you'll be able to sit for long. Excuse me. To, to, uh, but initially you can have some pillows, you can have some support. All right. So what is following the breath? So how does your breath happen? Air flows in through your nose, right? Then it goes through your esophagus, the in-wind pipe goes through your throat region into your lungs. And, and as we know, the lung contracts or expands. And then because of the lung movement, there is a diaphragmatic movement, right? And then your stomach comes out, stomach goes in. So in following, we want to follow your breath from the moment it enters your nose till the moment it enters your, leaves your nose. So this part, this is happening in like a fraction of a second or a second. Breath goes in, windpipe, chest expands. There are movements in the chest. There is movement in the stomach. So this part you have to follow. And you just need to follow all the sensations and movements due to your breathing, due, not due to anything else. If you have a sensation due to your sweat, sensation due to some noise, then you, you should ignore that. But any sensation, any movement having due to your breathing, just keep following. So we're expanding our awareness from the nose to our the path of our breathing. This is called the cycle of breathing. You follow the path of your breathing. Follow your breath cycle. Right? Inhale, air passes. So when air passes, there is some feeling, some sensation or physical movements happen. Right? So you just need to observe that. Ah, yeah, there's a moment. There's a moment. There's a moment. Okay. But it happens very fast. So if we are trying to engage the mind a little longer. The first step, we expanded attention. And the second, sorry, we, we, are, we are trying to build attention. The second step, we're still focused on our breath. Attention is always on the breath, on your next breath, on your next breath, on your next breath. The first step, our awareness was here because we are trying to develop concentration. The second step, we are a little bit relaxing so that we want to develop awareness. We want to feel the flow of the breath. All right? So we will do that for 10 minutes before we get into the appreciation stage. All right, my dear friends, 10 minutes of equal breathing. 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the timing, 15 to 20 minutes of uh, uh, focus at your nose and 10 minutes of following your breath. Tomorrow we'll change the equation and then we will end with an appreciation stage. All right, so with that, let's get into the meditation uh, posture. Let's begin our uh, meditation. For those of you who are new, it is a basic procedure. Clasp your hands, cross your legs, close your eyes. Bring your attention onto your breath initially uh, for equal breathing and then observing your breath as you inhale, exhale normally and then continue following your breath as you inhale and exhale now. Let me see if there are any questions. Yeah, back curving is okay. Back curving is okay. Back curving, not, not slouching, but their back should be straight. So we will cover more of that later. All right, my dear friends, let's begin our breathfulness practice for today. Remove your spectacles, sit in a comfortable posture, make sure your body's head and shoulders are aligned. We'll begin with 10 minutes of equal breathing. 
bring your attention to your nose and start your smooth, long inhale and exhale. Relax your body, begin your inhale and exhale. As you inhale, long, easy and smooth, do your counting of one, two, three, four. And do not hold your breath. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Again, do not hold your breath, continue. And as you do so, observe the movements in your abdomen, stomach, belly. As you inhale, your abdomen should go out. As you exhale, it should go in. This is warming up for our meditation session allows your body to relax, your mind to become silent. Feel the rhythm of your breathing. Your mind wanders, you can restart your long inhale and exhale and continue. Keep your eyebrows relaxed, keep your hands relaxed, shoulders relaxed. Continue to breathe in long, breathe out long and easy. 
time your in breath and out breath to be equal and observe the moment it arrives you're preparing your body and mind for breath mindfulness meditation not get distracted by anything equal breathing should relax your body and calm your mind it also increases awareness of your breathing as you consciously take long inhales and exhales Three more minutes of equal or coherent breathing. This warm-up stage, it starts your body, mind and breath to be in alignment. Feel your body relaxing. Feel yourself getting more aware of your breathing. Feel your mind calming down as we prepare to observe our breath more closely.
wonderful my dear friends now drop your conscious breathing conscious equal breathing let's move into observing our breath at the nose move your attention to your normal breathing and move your awareness to your nose only your nose and start observing your breath at your nose the next 20 minutes we will practice observing your normal natural breathing at your nose closely observe without straining yourself the start of your inhale start of your or end of your inhale start of your exhale end of your exhale as air enters into your nose and exits from your nose feel all that happens all the sensations on your upper lip inside your nostrils and turns to your nostrils the next 20 minutes just you and your breath at your nose nothing else everything can wait for the next 30 minutes you feel you are being bothered by thoughts you can apply the technique of labeling or the technique of counting continue to observe your breath at your nose my dear friends you get thoughts or other distractions let them go and bring your attention back to your breath observe your breath your normal natural breath at your nose my dear friends feel the focus feel the joy of focus joy of concentration as you are aware of each and every breath do not strain your forehead do not strain your eyes 
keep your head and neck straight your shoulder and fingers relaxed your entertain thoughts you have time for that later analyze do not judge any breath the only place you should be conscious of is your nose and be conscious and aware of all the sensation due to your breathing your mind keeps wandering apply the technique of labeling or counting let's continue to observe the different points of your normal breath the start of inhale end of inhale start of exhale end of exhale Just 10 more minutes of focusing at your nose, observing your breath at your nose. If 
could feel relaxed joyful if you are feeling any discomfort you are not doing it right Excellent. Continue to observe your breath at your nose. This step builds concentration, builds attention. That is the foundation for any meditation practice. excellent my dear friends continue to be with your breath at your nose no where else nothing else observe your normal natural flow of your breathing easy natural normal you should not feel any discomfort no strain keep your body relaxed five more minutes of focusing on your breath at your nose 
experience the joy of focus and concentration. Wonderful. Do not encourage thoughts, do not encourage distractions. Continue to observe your normal, natural breath very closely as it enters and leaves your nose. Two more minutes of the focusing step. Just your nose, your breath at your nose. Wonderful, my dear friends. With that feeling of focus and concentration, now let us move into the next step 
of our breathfulness meditation slowly expand your awareness from your nose to your throat chest and stomach regions and start following your breath as you breathe in the air goes into your nose into the pipes in the throat region goes into your lungs is an expansion of lungs movement of the diaphragm movement of the stomach and then as you exhale feel the movement in your stomach the movement in your chest the sensations in your throat region sensations in your nose and exhale some of you may be able to feel the nose and the stomach that is okay but keep following the path of your breathing no judgment if you are not able to feel any sensation any part feel whatever you can feel as your breath travels from your nose through your throat region to your lungs and then back from your lungs to your throat region and your nose feel whatever you are able to feel but nothing else do not get distracted do not engage in thoughts do not engage in analysis just 10 minutes of following your beautiful breath your attention continues to be on every breath your awareness is now looking at the path your breath takes you are unable to follow throughout the cycle of the breathing just follow wherever you are able to notice the sensation of it do not alter your breath just observe what is happening in your body five more minutes of following your breath follow your breath at your nose with the sensations 
happen the movements that happen in your chest region or abdomen region this is something all of us can do bothered by thoughts or other distractions use the techniques of counting or labeling or equal breathing but always be with your breath Keep your head and neck straight, shoulders relaxed, back relaxed. Fingers relaxed. Watch the complete cycle of your beautiful breath. continue to follow your breath my dear friends last 3 minutes continue to be conscious of the full cycle of your breath wherever you are able to feel sensations or moments do not miss even a breath last one minute of following your breath
wonderful my dear friends now let's move into the appreciation stage bring your awareness to your heart region as you breathe in normally naturally bring up a feeling of gratitude in your heart first express thank you to yourself and your experience during today's breathfulness session next recall three things place or situations or persons that you want to be thankful for something that happened the last 24 hours bring each one of that incident person or situation into your mind bring the picture of that person situation and say thank you in your mind with a deep feeling of gratitude whatever we are thankful for grows there is a law of abundance next let's feel grateful say thank you to all the members of your family your friends the people around you in your everyday work for enabling you to move around progress live another day of your life lastly feel thankful to the environment to all the utilities to all the people in the government our societies for ensuring the daily activities to progress in harmony with the feeling of relaxation with that deep feeling of gratitude now my dear friends let's emerge from the breathfulness session for today relax your body become aware of your body become aware of the room you are in slowly unclasp your fingers place your palms on your eyes for a few seconds and you can open when you are ready wonderful that was close to 45 minutes of breathfulness today for all the newcomers congratulations you've been through this i know the experiences might be different some of the things we are trying out for the first time as we continue to practice things will ease and we are here to solve any questions <clears throat> patriji always says <laughs> learning meditation is like learning any other skill if you are learning flute some kind of music vocals or if you are learning to play a game a sport or any skill like painting or 
singing or writing, the most important component is not the teacher. Of course, the teacher and the way they teach is important. But what is significant is the practice that each one of us put into. As you keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing every day, the skills get finer and finer. And over time, it becomes embodied in each one of us so that it is like becomes our second nature. So meditation is no different. As we practice, all these initial issues will go out. All right. So I hope all of you found it relaxing. Uh, so let's move on to a quick uh, lesson uh, on another reason and another way how breathfulness helps. So before that, I know some of us did the breath or the mindful eating exercise yesterday. How many of you practiced mindful eating? When and how did you feel? You can type in the chat window for everyone to see. Did you practice mindful eating? How did you feel? What was different? Wonderful. Well, food was tasty. Eating less during breakfast. Okay. Took long time to eat. Yes, ma'am. Enjoying the eating. It's quite enjoyable. Very good. Feeling and will continue that. Wonderful. So, yeah, the common result of this experience is we are conscious of our eating and we eat lesser than normal. Lesser in the sense we eat as much as our body needs, not as much as our mind wants. Right? So people stop at the right time and you feel fuller a lot earlier than after you feel stuff. Chewing properly, digesting just the liquid through your throat has immense health benefits as the enzymes in your saliva are the key uh, digest, digesting agent. Most of the time we just swallow food. So being mindful of eating, being mindful of chewing, being aware of all the taste around it gives an extraordinary, fantastic experience. You'll be eating the same idli or same roti or same upma which used to be, what to say, boring and tasteless yesterday. But then when you start experiencing the different sensations inherent in that, without judgment, without any thoughts, it's a different experience. So I would like all of us to continue the mindful eating exercise for today. Tomorrow we'll go to a different exercise. So please practice mindful eating and mindful drinking. When you drink your water, Feel, feel the taste of the water, feel the sound of the water, feel the hot or uh, the coldness of the water, right? If you're drinking tea or coffee, feel the uh, multiple things that happen, the smell, the taste, the uh, hot or cold, the sound, right? I always keep joking. I come from Tamil Nadu. So in Chennai, one what what is things what is the one thing that is famous? Famous for filter coffee, and coffee drinking is absolute meditation because it covers all your five senses: the smell of coffee, the right taste of sweetness or or the bitterness. The when we drink it very hot, and we drink like making sound, right? And then uh, you feel feel that flow happening, right? The flowing of coffee. So all the senses getting in the sight of coffee and, you know, they do it. There are all the bubbles on top of the coffee when they do this. So there is uh, sight, there is taste, there is smell, and there is uh, feeling, right? And the sound. So everything happens, in, in, but, but you need to get the right coffee, which is not very normal nowadays. 
anyway, so enjoy your drinking water, tea, coffee, juice, and it's summer times, a lot of uh, enjoy juice, be it watermelon juice, whatever, there is a taste inherent in each of those, you can do that. All right, so with that, let's quickly dive in. So today's exercise is continue to do your mindful eating or mindful drinking and share your experience uh, tomorrow. And uh, before I dive into today's exercise or today's lesson on how breathfulness helps our energy body, just a couple of questions from our yesterday's session. We talked about two modes our body operates in. What are the two modes? One is stressful mode, the other one is relaxation mode. What are the two modes? The names given to those two modes. Very popular names. Can you type it in the chat window? I hope all of you have a notebook and pen handy and noting down points, which is what we mentioned in the confirmation email. Yes, fight or flight is one. Fight or flight mode. Relax and repair or rest and digest is the other mode. Very good. Rest and digest in other mode. Very good. And we talked about two, two limbs of our nervous system. What are those? Sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Very good. So that is the answer to my second question. So you were typing it for the first question. Wonderful, my dear friends. So yesterday, we saw how, how breath How breathfulness, uh, just by being conscious of our breathing, how we activate our relaxation response, right? And then just by activating relaxation response, all healing happens. Sleep, pain, discomfort, dry digestion, immunity building, all that happens just by being conscious of your breath. So hopefully you're able to see my screen. Okay. So... We're going to talk about today how breath regulates our energy flow or energy body. All right. And uh, some of you may be aware of this. Our yogic literature talks about five dimensions to our body. Right. We are the physical body, which is Andamaya Kosha. This is the body made of our cells, tissues, bones, nerves, which we've talked about yesterday. And then we have an energy body, uh, Pranamaya Kosha which is fed on prana, which is our breath. We'll talk about that today, the nadis and chakras. And then we have a dimension of what we call as mental dimension, manomaya kosha, which is our emotions and feelings, thoughts. We will cover that in the next couple of classes. And then there is this fourth kosha called vignanamaya kosha, vishesh jnana, vignanamaya kosha, which is wisdom or innate intelligence the intelligence that we are all born with, inner conscious, inner voice, our values, our intellect. So that is Vignana Maya Kosha. And then the final one is Ananda Maya Kosha, which is our bliss body. We are the bliss and intelligence that we are born with. That is our innate self, our innate consciousness. And we need prana, we need the physical body, we need the mind to carry on our existence on this material world and this material world and this earth. And uh, all spiritual traditions believe that our we should understand our real existence, which is intelligence and bliss. But the mind play starts happening, which prevents us from realizing our, our intelligence and bliss. All spiritual practices are for us to let go, let go of this mind, go over our mind, go beyond our mind to feel, be intuitive, and feel our bliss. So, yesterday we focused on the physical body. So, today we'll focus on our energy body. There are three main components of our energy system. One is the prana, the life force, or consciousness that is aligned to our breathing. We refer to the flow of prana. Today we expanded our awareness. We saw how the prana is flowing. The prana doesn't flow just in the path that we went today. Prana flows throughout your body. The third step of flowing, you will realize that. So prana is one component. 
the nadis and channels through which the prana flows is the second component right and the chakras are the energy center the three third component three components of our energy system and according to quantum physics and research everything is energy right and then we are our body is made of energy and before we understood or neuroscience understood how the nervous system worked yogis knew about our energy flows within the body they you they they saw our body as an energy container and they said everything happens through energy and all disease is because of energy flow blocks right even without using any microscope or performing any research which is what now our scientists and doctors are establishing through a different perspective which is something that can measure and see through our physical body nadis like the nerves and tissues are not visible to the naked eye they are like subtle energy lines running throughout the body there are 72000 nadis in the body which transport prana to all parts of the body however as you see in this picture only three play an important role ida pingala and sushumna ida starts on the left side of the body passes through the left nostril and runs the parasympathetic nervous system which is a rest and relax nerve we saw that yesterday pingala begins on the right side of our body passes through the right nostril and runs the sympathetic nervous system which again we saw yesterday which is the fight or flight mode and sushumna is the center is the center nadi that runs through the spinal cord and runs the central nervous system and ida impacts the right hemisphere of the brain pingala impacts the left hemisphere of the brain right we all know left hemisphere is responsible for all the logical and rational thinking and the right hemisphere is responsible for intuitive associative thinking so between these three nadis the impact of our fight or flight functions rest and relax functions analytical capabilities and our creativity and intuition pretty much all our functioning is done by the efficient functioning of our energy body and you see there are points where these three main nadis intersect or join so those are the energy centers the energy reservoirs which are called the chakras we call the chakra centers and as you can see there are different chakras again we're not going to dive deep into all those so there is enough material in and on the web and each chakra and and the yogis and and our upanishads have kind of listed out each chakra and what is the function of that and what happens if the chakra is less activated if the if there is blockage in that particular chakra energy does not flow in a uniform fashion so we talk about over activation and less activation of the chakra all right and uh, if the energy flows freely and continuously through the chakras it means one has a healthy body and mind if you are influenced by our emotions like shame like guilt like grief anger uh, uncertainty all that there are that means energy is not flowing freely within the body and each chakra is associated with a specific set of emotions and mental state each chakra corresponds to functions or specific set of organs in our body if you look at it each chakra is mapped to a certain set of endocrine glands this is the mapping between your energy body and your physical body right for example your your uh, swadhisthana chakra is mapped to your reproductive organs the manipura chakra is ma mapped to our digestive system and and the adrenal the pancreas gland and the adrenals right and then you have the anahata chakra you are responsible for your thymus gland then you have vishuddha chakra the thyroid gland any any problem with our thyroid gland means there is a vishuddha chakra it it's a call of expression you are not expressing well right then ajna chakra is is uh, related to our pituitary gland and then our sahasrara is responsible for the pineal gland in the brain so everything is mapped and uh, what impacts the flow of energy is our emotions we will learn about more about that in in the next few classes the energies in the lower chakras operate at lower frequencies and so you see negative emotions of greed anger hatred all that higher chakras resonate at higher frequencies because of positive emotions so 
positive emotions like love, compassion, creation, self-expression, intuition activate the higher chakras. That is why in at the end of meditation, we express gratitude, gratitude, love, all that activate our higher chakras. We cognitively do that. But as you continue to do your meditation, the chakra cleansing or chakra clearing happens. All right. So how does meditation play a role? Yeah, the very similar. Uh, there is also this uh, um, study from uh, the body side, right? So uh, now scientists say every cell of our body, we our body resonates with electro, photo, electromagnetic energies, right? Every feeling is magnetic. Every thought is electric, right? And then every cell emanates a certain set of photons. So light, electricity, and magnetism create the energy fields in our body. And there are certain techniques like curly and photography where you can see your body's energy field, where the chakras are blocked and all that. And there are larger fields, other people's energies, the uh, the energies of the earth, energies of the moon and sun that have an influence pattern on our body's energy fields. And our body's electromagnetic field extends out almost five meters out. So if you are near a person who's always constantly uh, emanating negative energies, you will feel that. Some, sometimes you are just being near a person with high energies of love and compassion, you will feel that energy is moving inside you, right? You'll feel an impact on that. So all that has deep science behind it, right? So how does breathfulness help? So breathfulness meditation helps regulate the energy flows. As we continue to be with our breath, Yesterday, we saw just by being here with our breath activates our parasympathetic nervous system or the relaxation response. So similarly, as we continue to be with our breath, energy blocks at different chakras get cleared and energy or prana starts moving up the spine. And we become aware of the circulation of energy through the nadis. As we continue the practice of breathfulness, you'll feel sensations in different parts of your body, in your arms, tingling in your arms tingling in your chest region, tingling in your thighs. So all that is, energy is always flowing. Only thing is, we are not being aware of it. First, we are trying to become aware of the breath, and then we will become start become feeling aware of the uh, energy flows due to our breath. All right, continuous and deep meditation practice regulates the energy flows. And over time, as the energy flows in our body regulate, a third eye activate, which is basically we are open to our intuition. We saw that brain picture yesterday, right? So deeper meditations. Yesterday we talked about beta, alpha, theta, and delta. Deeper meditation states generate elevated energy fields. And my dear friends, this is something that we'll keep talking about. Energy flows where attention goes. That is why you are focusing your attention on your nose, energy is flowing there, right? You're focusing. So it, it again, not just the body, like uh, the, the thing we do about uh, gratitude, as I said, we are grateful for something. That is our attention is on what we are thankful for. Energy flows in the form of getting us more of what we are thankful for. If you are thinking about lack, oh my God, I don't have this, I don't have that. The energy flows into that lack and then makes things happen. Like All right. So that's in a nutshell on how breathfulness helps our pranic body or energy body which has a very tight relationship to our emotions. We will cover that in the next couple of classes. And if you look at it, the five koshas and uh, the four, uh, uh, what is stanzas of Anapasi Sutras are related. The first stanza is of the physical body. The second stanza, or, or the breath. Second stanza is more about emotions and energy body, which we'll cover again later. All right. So with that, my dear friends, we have one more understanding of why breathfulness is important, why breath mindfulness meditation is important, right? It helps us live a healthy body and a healthy energy body, which will result in better emotion control and, of course, more healing. All right? So with that, uh, we will open up for questions. We just got five more minutes. So anyone has a question, or needs to share an experience, can raise your hand. If you have any questions or experience sharing on the chat window, please do so. Any questions on the process, the practice? 
So no thoughts, but I'm able, not able to focus for long on the instructions of focusing on no's process. It's only momentary during a local instruction. That is okay. Please continue. Please continue with the practice. Continue to be aware during my thoughts. Over time, you'll keep getting it. Any other questions? After meditation, when I see the wall, I can see the energy flowing. What is that I see? Um, it's, it's your mind. It's it's your visualization of your energy. So just let it go. Let it be. Nothing to analyze. I could feel the inhale, but not exhale. That is okay, ma'am. You are exhaling. Over time, you will learn the practice. Practice a lot more of focus. Focusing the attention. All right. So any other questions from any one of you? Anyone wants to talk? Anyone wants to ask a question, please raise the Zoom hand. You have four more minutes. Wonderful. So as we continue our practice, meditation or observing our breath becomes a lot more easier as we continue the practice. Please stay with the practice. And as I said, these 11 days, we are just conscious of our breathing. Nothing else. All other uh, things, all other points that I am making are primarily to emphasize the importance of it. Keep or give our minds some motivation. And as the Zen story goes, what is enlightenment? What is self-realization? Uh, the Zen monk says, right? Uh, someone asks a Zen monk, what is enlightenment? And he says, chop the wood, drink your tea. That is what is enlightenment. What does it mean? When you are chopping your wood, chop the wood. Complete focus, complete attention, complete awareness without thinking, which is what is mindfulness. And when you're drinking your tea, like we mentioned, it's the same thing, complete focus, complete attention. Similarly, every work that we do, cooking, cleaning, writing, programming, talking, everything we'll do, we'll do some of these exercises over the next few days. So everything, as long as we're doing in mindfulness, it calms your mind. It goes, it allows your subconscious mind to be calmer so that you don't get bothered. So my dear friends, the one last question is it, uh, okay, so a few questions. Instead of counting during equal breathing, I chant lake, I chant a name, both while inhaling and exhaling. This feels easier than counting. Yes, you can do that. It also develops concentration, but to move beyond concentration of your breath, at some point, you'll have to get into following your breath, observing your breath as well. Is it essential to close our eyes? Can we do focusing is it any other moment as well? Yes, as part of breathfulness meditation, we must close our eyes because once you close our eyes, Patanjali talks about pratyahara, only then we are inward. Otherwise, there is something happening out there. Once you close your eyes, 30%, 40% of your energy is preserved. So it is important. I can't sit for long due to age and health, so lying on bed and doing meditation. It's up to you, sir, but as long as you're able to feel the breath, continuous focus on your breath, you can do that. Sitting helps you with that. Sitting helps you be alert. Multitasking is not advised. Yes, absolutely not advised. We'll talk more about that in the next few classes. So all right, my dear friends, it's been uh, wonderful uh, talking to you this Saturday morning in India. Have a wonderful day. Have a mindful, conscious, breath aware day. Spend the day in bliss and joy. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Thank you. Have a nice day.